Begin the current Dabam Sech, this Baruch is Daf Nun Tes. Begin on the last of the small lines, ten lines down at the top of the Amid, where the Gemara continues the discussion from the previous Daf. Our share is co-sponsored by Kazuch and Yecheskel, Daf Achaim, and Torah Anytime. The concept we're speaking about here is the opening Mishnah of the Masechta regarding what's called, the Perik is called Haroya. The reason why it's called Haroya is called, we're talking about specific types, of, like the title of this Masechta, Brachas, certain type of blessings. We're talking about things when you see it or when you hear it, you make a certain bracha. Here we're talking about things that you hear. Where the Mishnah said regarding a category of, where you say, God's strength, His might fills the world. These are awesome things. So we make these brachas. And one of them mentioned the Mishnah, which our Gemara begins with, with Al has voice. On Zvois, when you hear Zvois, you make a Kaychik Rasm al Oilam. Says Gemara, my Zvois, what is Zvois? So Amr of Katini says it's Gua. And it's actually the Halacha, by an earthquake. And that is the, 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 in their language, they would call an earthquake when the earth shook Guha. That's what a Zvois is. When there's an earthquake, a person makes a bracha that Hashem's might fills up the world. Now the Gemara brings a story actually, Rav Katina, he just said their interpretation that it's Gua. The Gemara brings a story with Rav Katina. Rav Katina have a cause of he's going on the road. When they came to the entryway of the house of someone who practiced this, what's called necromancy, which is the oiv. It's forbidden in the Torah. You take a bone, it's some type of a kishib, some type of sorcery. You take the bone of a dead person, and then the bone speaks and says regarding certain secrets. Because the word tamya means bones. So oiv tamya is the one who does oiv with the bones. So when he reached the entry of the house, genach gua, the earth shook very much. And these two words, Ganach Agu, means the same thing. There was a shaking, a shaking. Samar, when he, so Graf Katina felt the earthquake when he was passing by the, the entryway of the sorcerer. Amar says, Mia da Evetami, does the bone necromancer know high Gua Mau? What is this Gua? What's the source of why an earthquake happens? So Ramali Kala, so the necromancer opened up his, he lifted up his voice. He says, Katina, Katina, am I laying down? Why shouldn't I know? When God remembers his sons, that they're resting in pain between the nations of the world. This is a song uh, from a he, he has two tears dripping down from his face into the great sea. And his voice is heard from one end of the world to the other. That's an earthquake. That's where earthquake comes, so to speak, metaphorical. God has two tears, it drips into the sea, makes a huge Weighs and makes, and makes the earthquake. Now, Amrav Katini says, Ayyvitamya, bone necromancer, Kadavu is a liar. Umilin Kadive, his words are lying, are a fraud. Because he says, hey, ach, if that's the case, Gua Gua Mi then actually the earth should have shook two times because there's two tears. So therefore, he's a liar, he's a fraud. So he's actually Belohi. Actually, it's not like the Rav Katina said. Gua Gua Oven. Actually, the earth shook two times. So why didn't he admit to him that that's really the reason of why the earthquake is? It's actually a We don't want people straying after people that are not appropriate types of people. So although he actually had the right interpretation, he said he found a way to say that what he's saying is a, is a lie. But the truth is actually he was right. That actually it's because of the two tears that come down and therefore the earth shook actually two times. That's one interpretation. Rav Katina himself he gave his own interpretation. Where does an earthquake come from? It's so to speak, Sepikapa. God clasps his hands together. From the sound of clapping his hands together, the earth shakes. And we find that God, so to speak, claps his hands together. It says, in Yecheskel, it says mani, aka kapi al kapi. God says, and I will also clap my palms with each other. And then it's like, you know, I'm clap the hand and then it calms you down from your anger. So to speak, that's what God does. Again, these are all anthropomorphic terms. It's not what God has hands. But it's the concepts, and that is what it manifests in this world. Reb Nassim, he says a third interpretation. He says, Anocha misanech. It's God that he's moaning, he's sighing. From that sigh, the earth shakes, and we find that God sighs. And like it says, the blessing in Cheskel. And the Shem says, and I, I put to rest, Hamasi bam, my anger in them. In other words, so to speak, that God has an anger, and he sighs, and he goes, and that is calming for him. And I'm consoled by that. In other words, I, I get consoled for the bad that I do to them. That's the sigh. That's what makes the earth shake when God, so to speak, sighs. Rabban Ami, they give a fourth interpretation. It's when he's kicking the sky. Shemak says the Pesach in Yirmiya. Heydad, which is the word that they scream out. Heydad is kedoichem. It's like those who trample the grapes. Yana, they shout out. Meaning when they're trampling and they're kicking. And this is what God does, so to speak, with the earth. Is the same thing. It's to all those who settlers in the land. God, so to speak, kicks the earth, and that's what makes it 
just like the, those who trample the grapes, they kick it, so do, that's what God does with the world. Ravach Yaakov, he says a fifth interpretation, what does an earthquake come from? Is Deichikas Raglav Techas Kisei Yaakov. What he does is, he, he, he pushes his feet beneath his, his throne of glory. It means like when you have a chair and you, you push your feet under the chair, so when God kicks, so to speak, he, heaven is on top of earth, so he kicks downward under his chair, under his throne of glory, and that's, the earth is his footstool, so therefore the earth here shakes. Shalom, says the post in Yeshaya. Koyim HaShem, so says HaShem. Hashemayim Kisi, the, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is the footstool of my legs. So again, we had five different interpretations of what an earthquake is. If it's God, so to speak, two tears, or he clasps his hands, or he's sawing, or he kicks the earth, or it's when he pushes his feet beneath his throne, that's what causes an earthquake. Now the Gemara continues going back to the halacha of the Mishnah that said, another thing that you say, which is halacha, there's a very common halacha, on thunder, when the person hears thunder, he makes a bracha, says Gemara, where does it thunder come from? So again, here also we have different interpretations. Amar Shmuel, he says, Anani it's when the clouds roll and they collide one in the other, it makes a sound. Or another interpretation is when the clouds hit the sky, and it rolls forcibly into the sky, that sound, that boom, makes a thunder. Shlomo says the Pasuk until him, it says, Koil Ramcha, the, th- the sound of the thunder is begalgal, is when it, when it rolls, he'iru barakum tevel, it lights up the earth with lightning, rugza, it trembles, vatira sha'aretz, and the earth is roaring. But one thing we see from the Pasuk is that the coil of the ram, of the thunder, is begalgal, is it's rolling, when it either rolls into another cloud, or when it hits the, 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 the surface of the, of the sky. Rabban Ami, they say second interpretation. They say, no, it's anani deshavchi ma'ila adadi. It's when clouds pour water from one to the other. Shalom says the Pasuk in Yirmiya. L'kul titai, for the sound of its placing, hamoid mayim bashamayim, the abundance of water in the sky, that's the sound that it makes, and that's the thunder that we hear. Rabbi Yaakov Ami gives a third interpretation. It says, it's barka takifa, it's strong lightning, the barak banana that strikes the cloud, umitbar gezizi de barza, and it breaks the pieces of the hail, that sound is thunder. Rav Ashi gives a fourth interpretation. He says, it's anani chalchuli mechalchuli. We're talking about clouds that are hollow. Va'asi zika umanasheva pamayu. And then the wind comes and blows on the opening of the cloud. That is what thunder is. V'dami kizika al pumdani. It's just like when wind blows on the opening of a barrel. You have those instruments that it, it blows in the hollow and it makes that sound. That's what a lot of instruments are. They have a hollow and then you have wind blowing through it. That's the sound it makes by the, by the barrel. That's exactly what the sound of, a sound of thunder comes from. Now says the Gemara, It's logical like the interpretation of Rebbe Acha that said that when lightning strikes the cloud, that boom is what thunder is because the Barak Baraka, and this is actually the, 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 the nature testifies this. What happens is at first you have a flash of lightning, Umenami anani, and then you have the rumbling of the clouds, and then the asimitra, and then the rain comes. So essentially, when lightning goes into the cloud, you first see lightning, a flash, then you hear the rumbling, and you have boom. So therefore, it says the Gemara, it's mistabah, like we had four different interpretations of what, what thunder is from, either when the clouds collide, or when the clouds pour water one from the other, or it's when the lightning strikes the cloud. And that says the Gemara, it's Mestaba like that, Manda Amr, that's when the lightning strikes the cloud, because that's actually what happens. You have lightning, and then you have the grumbling, and boom. So therefore, the Gemara says that's Mestaba, that's where the thunder comes from. Or we had one that the hollow clouds, then then the wind, that when it blows in it, it makes a sound, and that's where the, the thunder comes from. The Gemara contains with Allah the Mishnah, said Ba'ala Ruches, it's also Halach Lamaisa. Regarding winds, we make a Kaycha Gerasa Mala Eilam. It says, my Ruches, what is considered any wind, you make a Kaycha Gerasa Mala like today? And my body says, no, and this is actually the halacha, it's zafa. It's zafa, like Taisa brings from the Yishalmi, is when it comes with a whirlwind, with force. If it just calm winds, actually we'd make a baruch is abracious. Again, we don't make on any wind, but on the forcible winds, like a whirlwind, then one would make an ice, uh, would make a, uh, a shakaychi grasim ala because that's might and force. But my body says, give me, we have a tradition. The zafa balayla lahavya, that there's no whirlwind at night time. Says, give me, we see the our whirlwind, whirlwinds at night. Says, give me, no, who does chuli be mama? That's because it started during the daytime. But to start at nighttime, that doesn't happen. More of Rama Bayis says, Gimir, we have a tradition, the Zafa, that a whirlwind, Tarti Shoyle, it doesn't last for two hours. Lakaim Hashanah, that fulfills what it says, the Pasuk Yenachim, Leitokum, it will not arise, Pamayim Tzara, two times a misfortune. Which means to say, two hours, you're not going to have the Tzara of the whirlwind. It says, Gimir, Ayva Kachazin Dekai, I, we see that it does, you can have a whirlwind for two hours. It says, Gimir, Demafsik Beini Beini. It stops in between. 
So therefore, it doesn't go on for exactly two hours. So the Gemara says it doesn't start at nighttime and it doesn't go on for two hours. Says the Gemara with the halacha of the Mishnah, we have another halacha of Maisa, very practical one. Is vala brakim a lightning? Oyma says the Mishnah, you say baruch blessed Hashem shekoyichek v'rasid that is strengthened his might. Malalim fills the world. Now in practice, actually, we make a oisa Maisa v'rishas on lightning. The, the, that's what the minig is that by thunder you make a shekoyichek v'rasim malalim, and on lightning you make a oisa Maisa v'rishas. Says the Gemara, my brakim. What is lightning? Some of it says barka. It's, it's, the word barka is from the word of maverick, which it's a spark of, of light. That's what lightning is. Now, Vamara, the more of he qualifies, he says, baraka yechida, a single, meaning if, if, even if it's only one flash of lightning, or white lightning, or barka yerukta, or yellow lightning, vanana de sulkin bekeren marabas, or if the clouds came up on the western corner, the astin bekeren deremis, and it's coming around from the southern corner, or you have two clouds that are colliding, one with the other. Kulu and they're all harsh. They're not signs of blessing. So I think about my nafkim, what's the halachic relevancy? What do I care that this one lightning, this white one, the clouds, what's the difference if they're harsh? So I think about the It's that you should beseech mercy, you should pray, and you should dab when you see those signs coming, because those are not simonim shal bracha. Now, the more qualifies, but this only if they're at night time. Of Bitsafra, but let's say these things are happening in the morning, let's put Mashasha, there's no substance to them, there's no concern, they're not going to cause any damage. That lightning, that clouds, it doesn't make a difference when it's the morning. Says the Gemara, like Omer Reb Shmuel Bar Yitzchak, he says, Hani Anoni Bitsafra, like you find the clouds in the morning time, let's put Mashasha, there's no substance to it. He says the Pasuk in Hesheya, Vachazdechem, he's scorning that, he's saying, and your kindness is Kanan Boiker Gaimer, is like the clouds in the morning. I mean, it's not permanent. It's in, in the morning, that's, it's just a joke, it doesn't really have substance. That's how your kindness is. It's not a real thing. As the Gemara says, I'm like a Pabla Abayi, says, how could you say that? How could you say clouds in the morning is not really going to rain? It's not going to cause any damage. But people say, they say the following phrase, if you open up your door in the morning and it's coming down Mitra, it's raining, to you I'm going to say, if you're a donkey driver, meaning you do transportation, taking produce from one place to another place to sell, moich sakich vagani. Fold over your sackcloth beneath you and go to sleep. Meaning, don't go anywhere to bring produce because since it's going to rain so much, the price of wheat, the stock is going to drop because everyone's going to know it's raining so much there's going to be an abundance, a surplus of wheat. So don't, don't even bother going out to sell your stuff because no one's going to buy because it's, it's not going to get a, a penny on the dollar. So you see that when there's clouds in the morning to the country, it's going to rain so much. How can you say that there's no substance to when there's clouds in the morning? So it's going to be like, it's not difficult. It depends on what type of clouds. Ha, the cutter behavior. If it gets knotted up in the sky, thick clouds, that's good. Then it's going to rain a lot. When did we say that it's nothing, there's no substance to it? It's like the Pasik said. The Pasik we quoted was Anan Baiker, the Anan. Anan means when it's very thin and insignificant clouds. In the morning, then there's no substance, then that's the difference. So it depends. Yeah, clouds in the morning could either be no substance if they're thin clouds, but if they're thick clouds, then there's going to be a lot of rain and therefore don't even bother going out. Now, what's the purpose of thunder? A famous teaching, Amr Alexandri, Amr Bishub Malevi says, God did not create thunder, just to straighten out the crookedness of the heart. You hear that boom, and it's just like, whoa, you get the shock. Somebody says, the passing in Kehelis, God did, that they should have fear from him. And how does God make, he makes with natural phenomena like thunder, where a person, that, that's to straighten out the crookedness in the heart. Another teaching on these halachas from Amr Alexandri, Amr Bishub Malevi. It says, Araya said, Keshes Ba'anam. Someone sees the rainbow in the clouds. Tzarech Shippal Apanam. He has to fall on his face because it's like seeing the vision of the honor of God. Shnemek says, Apasim Yechesko. It says, Kamar HaKeshes. Like the vision of the rainbow, Shayi Ba'anam, that will be in the cloud, Begoyim, etc. Which it says in the Pasig, what's the etc. in the day of rain. So too is going to be the appearance of the splendor all around, which is the image of the figure of the honor of Hashem. There, and I'm going to see it. The apple upon it, I'm going to fall down on my face. So seeing the rainbow is somewhat like seeing the whole color spectrum of God's presence in the world. So therefore, you're going to bow down just like you bow down in front of God. But, and this actually the halacha as we practice, light the Allah in the West, they actually scorned and they, they cursed whoever would do this. 
in Eretz Yisrael. Mishum de Mechzi Kiman de Sagel, the Kasha looks like you're bowing down to the rainbow, and then, but that's not appropriate, and that's our practice. We don't bow down when we see a rainbow. Avad Bruchi, but to make a bracha, Avad Bruchi, we actually do make a bracha. It says, Gimma, Maim Avaruch, what bracha do you make when you see the rainbow? Baruch Zech Abris, bench is Hashem, that he remembers the covenant, which is by the Mabal, that he said he's not going to bring a a uh, flood to the world anymore, and the sign for that was the rainbow. Now, but in the Brisa they taught He says a, a different text. Nemon Bebrisa, he's trustworthy in his covenant, which was again not to bring a flood to the world. But Kain Bebemari, and he fills his, he fulfills his word. Now, Amra Papa, as he does many times in Shas, he says Hilkach Nemrin Lotavai. Therefore, we should say both, and that's actually the text as we say it. The bracha as we say it when you see a rainbow is Baruch Zech Abris, blessed is God who remembers the covenant. The Nema Babrisi is trustworthy in his covenant, the Kaim Babamari, and it fulfills his words. That's the Allah when you see a rainbow. Now, in the Mishnah, continuing on the category of Maisa Baratius, when you see natural phenomena, we said Allah Aram on the mountains, Valak Vais, on the hills, and etc., a, a list of things. We said, you say, Isa Maisa Baratius, God is blessed that he makes these beautiful acts of creation. Now, says the Gemara, Atu Kolhani Damar Natashta, well, what you tell me, the categories that we spoke up until now, Lav Maisa Baratius, no, they're not, meaning you said regarding thunder, and you said regarding whirlwinds, and you said regarding lightning, you said all those things that we discussed on this stuff and the previous stuff. On the earthquake, you make shekerig vras malayim, and only these things, like mountains and hills, then you make oisamayz abrishes. What? Those things were not acts of creation, but Vixir is a passage in Yirmiyah that says, "Brakim lamater, lightning for rain." Aser, God did. So you see that even lightning was a mice of Horatius. So why only mountains do you make a mice of Horatius? Why don't you make a mice of Horatius also on lightning? That was also one of the acts of creation of Sheshem Horatius. I'm a bai. He says, you're right. Karach v'tani, you should wrap it and learn them together. The two brachas that the Mishnah talks about, of Isa Maisa Horatius and Shekarach v'tani, you should wrap them together in the two categories and say, on all the categories, you make these two brachas. It was just pointing out that these are very kaycha gibras ma'olam, these are my zarech, but really the truth is, both you can make either one. Now, however, Rav Ami says no. He says, you, you're halfway there. Hasim, over there in the first category, you're right, there mavach tarti. There you're going to make both brachas. And Taisa explains, it means either one or the other, whichever one you want to. And that's actually the halacha, that you could choose whichever one. Either baruch shekaycha mole oilam, because these are things that are awesome, the earth is quaking and the, this thunder and this lightning. And also, they're also acts of creation. Hach over here, in the second category, let's say mountains and hills, it's only acts of creation. By mountains, you cannot make the bracha that his splendor fills the whole world because they're only in one place. Wherever it is, then you can make the bracha maizerashis. You cannot make the bracha that's why it's split into two. You're right, the first category has both. But we're saying the one that the other one doesn't have. The, fir- the first category has which the second category doesn't have. It only has maizerashis. Now, as Gemara says, Hach, over here, Yitzhak Meisah Sikr, it only has that it's an act of creation, like we said, Shekarech Moleim Lekha. Now, the Gemara continues with other teachings from Amri B'Shu Malevi on, again, regarding Haraya, which is the title of our parak. Haraya Riki Batarasa. If someone sees the sky in its purity, a clear blue sky, so Eimah Baruch Yitzhak he says the bracha, the blessed is God who made the acts of creation. Why? Because how was the sky made? The sky was made clearly blue. And only then did God cover it over with clouds. So when you see a, a clear blue sky, you make the bracha, Yitzhak Meisah Bereshis. Now it says going to say, when is that? So Amabai says, Ki asa mitra kulaleli, if it rained all night, with safra asa istana, in the morning there's a northern wind, with magalilu shamai, and then the sky is totally revealed and open, that's when you can make the bracha. Now says the Gemara, but a plea the Rafim Rav Papa Rav Chizda. Because Amr Rafim Rav Papa Rav Chizda, he says, Miyem Shachar Beis Amigdash, from the day that Beis Amigdash was destroyed, lo yineris riki batara asa, you never have a totally clear sky. Shamak says the Pasuk in Yeshaya, al b'shamayim kadris, God says, I will cloak the heaven with blackness, the sack, and the sackcloth, awesome ksusim, are going to make for their covering. So you never really see clearly blue sky. There's some darkness and blackness. And therefore, he says that you never make a bracha of oisim ayserashis on a clear blue sky because you never really had that since the Chorbin Mesa Migdash. It's covered somewhat. It's not totally clear. It's covered in some type of blackness. It's now, not right? Well, it's a discreet. No, Vaya doesn't discreet. You just said it's one type of bracha, but it's not an act. Yeah, but, that, but it sounds like that's what the Gemara is saying that he holds that you would make. He's saying halach lamais. He's not moira. Usually, by a moira and tanoim, they say differently. If a moira is saying something, he's saying it has a practical relevancy, and then he's saying you can make such a bracha, and he's saying no, there is no such bracha because it never had such a situation like that. We continue to Tamid Beis, where we continue with the brachas of ma'isa veracious, and specifically what, how they apply. Time of the brisa. Haraya chama b'tkufasa. If someone sees the sun in the beginning of its cycle, this is what very well known as bircha sachama, which is. If the sun goes back to the original place of where it started its cycle off, 
in the same exact day and the same exact hour, which is when the luminaries, which includes the sun, were hung up, so to speak, in the skies. And that's when it started circling its cycle and to serve in its purpose. When it gets exactly to that exact point, there you're going to make a bracha, and we'll explain shortly how, when that exactly is. Lavana big or if the moon is in its mightiness, which is when it's by the mazel of Tla, which is by Nisan, when the world was created. Or the Kechavim, Kechavim here does not mean stars. The primary planets, there's five primary planets, although there's seven, maybe eight, we only consider in Halacha the ones that you could really see well, which are the five primary planets. When they are B'mesilaisim, when they're in their orbits, where they started off their orbit, Umazalis, and also the, when the zodiac, the signs of the zodiac, which we spoke about in the previous stuff, regarding the certain constellation of the stars, that there's 12 of them correlating to the 12 months of the year, when they're considered in the exact order as they were when the world was created, you say the brach of Baruch Eisavreshus, blesses God, who made the acts of creation, because you're seeing it exactly as God created it. Now, the Minna Ga'ilam is actually not to make brachas on any one of them besides Birch HaZachama, and the, the Mepharshim explained because the other ones require methodical calculations by scientists. Birch HaZachama, we know. The other ones, it's not as exact. It depends on different computations, variations, and we don't make the bracha, but Birch HaZachama we do. And the Gemara asks, the Imus Haba. So when exactly is the sun exactly in the beginning of its cycle? Amar Bayis says, Kol Chav Cheshnin. Every 28 years of the Tkufa of Nisan, which is when the world was created, the world was created in Nisan. In the beginning of the 28 years, when it's starting its cycle over, which is Vahadr Machzer, that is that the, the, the order of the beginning of the sun, when it started its cycle, when, again, when the luminaries were put up into the sky, we know in the Bria Sa'ilam, the, there, was, there was six days of creation. When were the Ma'iris made? On Yom Revi, on the Wednesday. So when, when that is going to be, Enough of Tukufas Nisan. You're going to have, the, the, as we're going to shortly explain, there's four Tukufas in the year. The year is split up into four parts. When you get the Tukufa of Nisan, which is what's called the equinox, there's two times a year that the world is exactly 6 o'clock in the morning to 6 o'clock at night. It's exactly 12 hours. So the night and day is exactly, that's called equinox. Then you have the solstice, you have times when the, 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 the day is the longest it's ever going to be, and then you have times when the night is going to be the longest it's ever going to be. And those are quadrants. Those are when you start the next Kufa. Uh, maybe on a different depth we'll discuss that, but the, the way the, the sun goes, it's really the earth going around the sun, but we, we describe it as the sun with the earth. Point is, is that there's times when it's the most, the, the, the most hours in the day, the least hours in the day, and those are when it's exact, exactly night and day. So when that Kufa of Nisan, which is the equinox, exactly 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., is going to be Bishab side in the muzzle of Saturn, which that's, as we're going to shortly explain also, that's the hour, that's the beginning of Wednesday night. Meaning in Halacha, Wednesday doesn't start Wednesday morning. Wednesday in Yom Revi starts 6 p.m. on Tuesday night. That's Be'urte Ditlas, the evening of Tuesday. Nigi Arba, when it's starting the night of Wednesday, that is when the sun set on Tuesday and the Wednesday starting, meaning exactly 6 p.m. in the muzzle of Saturn. That happens every 28 years that's exactly the moment that God put the sun to start its cycle. That is when we make the Birch HaZachama. That's exactly as it was when Oysa Bereshis, when the acts of creation were made. Then we make the Bracha of Oysa Bereshis. Now, just to explain, Rashi clarifies as follows. He says, Shabsai is the name of a, what we call in our Gemara, it's the, it's the name of a planet, what we call Saturn. So the first moment of when Wednesday starts, at that moment, when the first moment of Wednesday, which is 6 p.m. on Tuesday night, which is the beginning of Wednesday, that's when the luminaries were put up. Now, Rashi also points out that there are seven hours which correlate to the seven mazalis that repeat itself, which doesn't have any scientific significance as far as I know, but it has, it has um, metaphysical significance. And it's called Shatzem Chanchal. Shatzem is... Chanchal is seven, na- seven letters, which that correlates to the order of as the hours go, that's it, 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 each mazel is in charge of that hour. Now, therefore, if you're going to do the calculation, if every seven hours it's going to switch off another mazel, and it's only those seven, it's five primary planets with the sun and the moon, it's going to come out to be 28 hours. If you do the calculation, every night of the week is going to start off with a different mazel. If every seven hours you, you're going in that order, every night of the week is going to start off with a different seven days in the week, 
seven of these mazalas, every night is going to start off with a different one. And that's called chatznash chalam, meaning a matzah Shabbos, which is the first moment, sit, let's say 6 p.m. on Matzah Shabbos, whatever it is when the first hour is on Matzah Shabbos, you're going to have what's called Kaychiv, which is Mercury. That's the Chaf. The beginning of Monday is going to be Tzedek, which is Jupiter. The beginning of Tuesday is going to be Noiga, which is Venus. The beginning of Wednesday, and this is the significant one for our Gemara, is Shabsai, which is Saturn. The beginning of Thursday is Chama, is the sun. The beginning of Friday is is the moon, Levana, and the beginning of Shabbos is Madim, is Mars. Those are the seven planets, and that's how every night starts at 6 p.m. with one of those. Now, the beginning of the days, which Eloisa Shachar also has its own, what's called Chalam Chatznash. But what we're talking about in our Gemara is, every, as we said, there's four Tkufas in the year. A tkufa, if we're splitting exactly into quarters, we're splitting the 365 and a quarter days in the year, divided by four, that means every single tkufa goes for 91 days plus seven and a half hours. Because if you're splitting, do the math, then take out your phone, whatever you want to do, 365 point, uh, is, it's, and a quarter divided by four is going to make that it's going to come out to 91 days and seven and a half hours that it's going to be from the last kufa when it started. So therefore, essentially what that means to say, if you're calculating hours, it's going to be 30 hours later from, for, every, for, for, for every fourth kufas. Meaning, when you're going to go to the next year where you are now, if let's say we, count, we go to the next year on this day, you're going to be a day and a quarter for the year. Because seven and a half hours to the next kufa, seven and a half hours to the next kufa. So you're basically doing seven and a half hours, seven and a half times four, because there's four tkufas in the year to get back to our tkufa. That's, that's going to be 28 hours. 28 hours is 24 hours is a day, plus four hours is, is, is going to be a quarter of the day. So you're going to be a day and a quarter later when you get to the same day. So every four years, you went now five days. Day and a quarter times four is now five days worth. So it comes out that the Tkufa that you're in right now, let's say we're starting the Tkufa of Nisan right now, you're not going to come back to exactly the time you're at right now, only if it's four years later, because it, you have to get back to 6 p.m. You'll get back to exactly the hour, not the day yet, that's going to be the next Cheshben, to the exact hour, which is going to be 6 p.m., only when it's four years later. When it's five, when you're going to get five days later, you're going to end up by exactly the same exact, if you're five days exactly, you're not any hour differential, you're being at the exact hour. Yeah. So an hour would be six times uh, in a day. That's not a quarter. Um, no, it's, it's, it's 24, it's 30, no, it's, it's 30 hours, right? What did we say? We said that there's, um, no, 30 hours, you're right, not 20, I meant to say 30 hours. 30 hours a day and a quarter, yeah. So, so, so then you can end up five days later is going to be what's called a machzer cotton, a small cycle. You'll be at the exact hour. Now, but if you do seven of these small cycles, that's called a large machzer. That's going to come out to be not only the exact hour, it's going to be the exact day. A sign to, for this small machzer means to say, if you want to be exactly 6 p.m., four years later, a sign for that is dabaz hagaav. Which basically means to say, the day of the week, if you start, let's say, on Dalad, which is Wednesday, which is what we're talking about in Agamara, five, uh, four years later, you'll be on Monday. Four years later, you'll be on Shabbos. Four years later, you'll be on Thursday. Four years later, you'll be on Tuesday. Four years later, you'll be on Sunday. And four years later, you'll be on Friday. Four years later is when you have the seventh cycle. Then you're going to come back to Wednesday again. So essentially what we're saying for Birch HaZacham is you don't come back to be both. The beginning of Wednesday and 6 p.m. only every 28 years. Because like we just said, every small cycle of, of four years will be five days later. You'll get to exactly 6 p.m. But that's five days later. It's not the same exact day. But then when you do that seven times of four Mazayrim, you'll come back not only to 6 p.m. It will be now exactly Wednesday at 6 p.m. So therefore, Becha Sacham is once every 28 years because you'll be exactly the moment when God created the world. God created the world, the God created this, not the world, this sun was put up the beginning of Yom Revi, which was 6 p.m., which was, which mazel starts off the night of Wednesday? 
That's Shabbat. Every night of the every night of the week, a different mazel of the seven planets starts it off. Which one was Wednesday? It was Shabbat. So if you want to get back to Shabbat, which is the beginning at 6 p.m. on Wednesday, it's got to be 28 years because every four years will get you back to 6 p.m. but you're on a different day. And every four years you'll be 6 p.m. but on a different day. After you do that seven times, you'll be back not only the same hour, you'll be back on the same day too. So yeah, so that's actually that they, they discuss that in, in the in the in the place game. They say we do it in the morning for a different reason. You could even do it till until noon. But yeah, some say you do, some say even if you don't see it, right. But 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 that's that's a point that they bring up. That that why do we do it in the morning? That's discussed in the in the halacha. Yeah, Haray Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, so they talk about that. Does that mean you have to actually see it? Yeah, ideally you wanna see it. No, the problem he's saying is that, it's, but, it, but, you don't, but you're not seeing it exactly in the morning then. That's the problem. The Chamla It starts at 6 p.m. It starts at 6 p.m. The exact cycle with the mazulas and the time starts the same way once in 28, uh, uh, 28 years. That's but we could only make the bruch in the morning when we see the Chamla. Right, right. They say something like that. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's the halacha that we know as, as Birkas Chamla. We continue with the halacha of the Mishnah. He said, If someone sees the great sea, which again we discussed in Allah, uh, is it the Mediterranean Sea? Is it, is it the ocean, Oceania? Is it is the Atlantic, the Pacific? That's uh, the discussion. But that's the, the halacha you make a bracha of Maisa uh, Beratius or Hayama Gadol. The prakim, the Mishnah said that when you see it occasionally, then you can make the bracha. So, what does that mean occasionally? So, Ami Rama Bar Abba, Rabbi Yitzchak, he says, until every 30 days. So, that's why actually. Meaning, some people, you never you hear people making the bracha. So some want to say, because you're always passing the, the Pacific. We're, we're, we're all near either Atlantic or Pacific. And, and therefore, the people, you don't find people making the brachas. But in halacha, that's actually brought as a real halacha. If you haven't seen the ocean in 30 days, to make the bracha when, when you see the ocean. Oh, so the sea, the yeah, this is different sheetas about which one it is. So you said that you can go somewhere where... Yeah, sure. Right, that you could see the, I was saying, with Gibraltar, 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 you could see both, and then you can make the Atlantic and the Mediterranean. Right, right. But, yeah, but that's the same. Atlantic Pacific is the same thing. It's just, it's called Oceania. It's the Yamukainis. Yamukainis is all the oceans that, we just call it different names because we're getting it on different sides. Uh, but that the Mediterranean is its own thing. The, now, another teaching from Amar Rabbi Bar Abba Amar Yitzchuk, he says, Aroya Pras, if someone sees the Euphrates River, Agishra the bubble by the bridge of Babylon. So Amy says, Baruch is gracious. This, this, this is because they had a tradition that the Euphrates was not changed by mankind from when it was created, from that point onward. So therefore, if you see by that bridge, you're going to make the Isa Mice Now, the inference is because later on, when they passed that bridge, man already diverted it. They already started digging and they changed it to a different path. It's not the way God created. You can't make the Baruch Isa Bereshis anymore. And as, actually, as the Gemara says, but in the today's times, the Shanyu of Parsei, that actually the Persians already changed it even above the bridge, you cannot make the Baruch either there anymore of Isa Mice Bereshis. Rather, it's maybe Shabr El has to be from the place of Beishabr and even higher. Rabbi Yisabami says, no, Me'id the Kira, from a place of a city which was by the Euphrates called Eid the Kira, El and above, which actually the Allah, if you know that a natural phenomenon like a river was changed, you can't make the Bracha Yisabami 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 because not the way God made it anymore, it's, it's the way mankind had tampered with it. Another teaching from Amir Rameh Barabi says, Aroya Digla, someone sees the Tigris River, and these are the famous four rivers that the world was created with, Agishra de Shivistana, by the bridge of the Shivistana, Oymer says, Baruch Yisabami Again, that God created this, it was one of the primary four rhythms. Now, says Gemara, my chidekel. Why is it called chidekel? So, Amr Vashi says, because Shemim of the waters of the Tigris are chadin, they're sharp, the kulin, and they're light. If you would weigh it, it's very light water, and therefore it's good to drink because it doesn't weigh down the body. My pras, why is the Euphrates called pras? Shemim, because its waters are par and verav, and the word pras is from par and verav, it, it's fruitful and it multiplies. As the Gemara illustrates, Vamar Rabbi says, Hide the Harifi b'nei Mechaisa. The reason why the people of Mechaisa are very sharp is from the Shasu Ma'ed the Diglas. They drink the waters of the of the of the, of the Tigris River, which are we said it's called Chidekel because it's very sharp. Additionally, Hide the Gechur this that they're red colored from the Mishamshi b'Mama because they have mad relations during the daytime. Therefore, their children are red, like the redness of the sun, which is a rose colored. Now, the Hide denied Ainai. Why are their eyes always darting back and forth? Because they live in dark houses, and when you live in a dark house, your eyes are darting to be able to see, and that's why they have those appearances. Again, one of them relating to back to the previous halacha. We had in the halacha of the Mishnah, on rain, you say, We said two things you make, one is good news, and one is when it rains, that God is good and He does good. 
says the Gemara, but like Shama Tebe Meitiv Merach, you really make a Tebe Meitiv when it rains? Bamer Bavo, Bamer Lassam Seib, but Masnei Tetan was torn in the Brisa, Meimus and Mevarach and Al Gisham. And when do you make a Brach on rain? When does it start? What type of rain? Says the Brisa, Mishayot Zachas and Likras Kala, when the groom goes to greet the, the bride. That's a metaphor. It means to say, when there's enough water that's gathered on the ground, and when a drop drips into that puddle, there's so much water that then the bottom water, like. Like you see those pictures sometimes where the, the water like splashes outward. That's like the chasm going to greet the kala, which some people still have that custom that the groom goes out to bring the kala to the chuppah. That's like the metaphor of the rain that's on the ground already drips out and goes to greet the rain coming. That's enough rain. Then you make the bracha. My mavachan. And what's the bracha? So Rabbi Yudah says, it's moide menachmelach. We give thanks to you. A kol tipa b'tipa shirazu to London for every single drop that comes down for us. And he actually would conclude, which is from the text of Nishmas, even if our mouths would be filled like song, like the seas of the river, etc., speaking, we wouldn't be sufficient to give thanks to you, Hashem, our God, Ad, until where we say the words and all heights in front of you, Tishtachabu will bow down. Barachat Hashem, bless you, Hashem, Reiv Hadais, the, the majority of the thanks. So the Gemara jumps in, Reiv Hadais, while we give thanks for the majority of thanks, we're like Kol Hadais, not all thanks. Amar Rabbi says, no, you're right, Amy, you should say Hokel Hadais, the God of, of thanks. Amr Papa, he says, Hulkach, but therefore, since it's a machlekis, as we mentioned, he does this many times in Shas, Nimrinu Lutabai, we actually say both texts. And we actually do this by Yishtabach, as Taisa points out. We say, Roy Vadois, the majority of, of thanks, Vokel Hadois, and the God of thanks. Whereas Rashi explains in Mesechtis Tainis, he says that, because Roy doesn't mean the majority, why would we say Roy for? Why can't you just say all? Roy means also abundance. So we're not just saying all, we're saying the abundance, and if we want to say both texts, and if we say both, when we give the thanks. But one thing, uh, uh, says the Gemara, but it's a difficulty. You tell me when it rains, you make a teba meitib, but here you see the text is a different text. You say, moi manachalach, with the text of nishmas, what's the bracha you make when it rains? Says the Gemara, it's not difficult. Ha, na loch of our Mishnah is told about deshama mishma. If you hear the good news that it rained at nighttime, when you wake up, you make a teba meitib. Ha, the chazi michse. The Bryce is told about when you see it raining, when you see it raining, then you say a bracha of meitib. Says Gemara, the Shama Mishma. You really tell me that when you hear the rain, that that it rained, that then you make a type of meitiv behind the Basura's tayvus. That's good tidings. But Tanan we learned in the Mishnah the other case in the Mishnah. There was two cases in the Mishnah. That you make a type of meitiv. One regarding rain and one good news. The Mishnah said al Basura's tayvus on good tidings. I'm a baruch a type of You make a baruch of a type of So how could you say the rain is when you hear the good news? That, that's just in the category of Basura's tayvus. So Ella rather says Gemara, you write a different answer. Idi be idi the mechze chazi. Both of them are talking about when you saw it raining. But like, not difficulty. When it rained a little bit, then you say, When it rained a lot, then you say, God is good and He does good. Another approach you could say is, Actually, both are talking about when it rained a lot. But look, it's not difficult. If He has land, then He makes a type of because God is good, because God's doing good for Him. When He doesn't have rain, He still gives thanks for the rain. Says the Gemara, Isli Ari, tell me when he has land, Hateva Meitav Amarach, then he makes a bracha Hateva Meitav, and that you said when he doesn't have, then he says Hamaitav. But what Tnan, which actually we learned in the Bryce, it says, Bonabai is Chadash, if someone builds a new house, which is all his, over Kanan Kim Chadash, he buys new clothing. So Aimi says, Baruch Shechiyanu, Vigiyanu, Lazman Azim, the Baruch of Shechiyanu, that God has kept us alive and sustained us to this time. Now, Shalai Bishalachim, if it's his and others, Aimi Hateva Meitav, then he makes Hateva Meitav. One thing you see is that when you have a house, that you make is shechianu. So how can you say that when you have land, you make a tovamitiv? Isn't it that you should make a shechianu? Says the Gemara. What we're answering is that what we had previously answered remains as we said. Ma'idim anachnulach is when you have no land. So you're just giving thanks that God brings rain to the world. Hatovamitiv is when you do have land. Oh, but then you ask the question, but don't you see that when you have a house, when you have a piece of land, then you say shechianu, you don't say hatovamitiv. Says the Gemara, like, it's not difficult. Had the isle should fist. When you have it in a partnership, then you make a teva meitiv. And that's a general rule, as we're going to shortly see. Hadalesli shutfis. When you don't have a partnership, the one that says when you build a new house, is tomat for yourself. So then you can make a shechianu. But rain is tomat when he has land. That's considered a partnership because you're like essentially partner with everyone in the world that has land that is appreciating and getting this gift of rain together with you. Then you make a teva meitiv. As the said, vatanya, which means... And this is a calm but not a, not a rhetorical one, not a question one. And we learn the Bryce exactly like this idea. The Bryce says, Ketzari Shaldava, the short end of this is, meaning the general rule is, Al Shalai, and this is actually the halacha. When it's only your thing, 
Ko'ema, he says, Baruch Shechiyana B'Kimanu. This is the Allah. When you buy a new article of clothing, it's just you wearing it. You make a Shechiyana. The God has kept us alive and sustained us to this good time. Ashalayva, Ashalchavay, but if it's for him and for his friend, the Allah actually is, I mean, you say, Baruch HaTevamet, if God is good and he does good. And therefore, since when you have land and it's raining, you're getting good and everyone else that has land is getting good. Therefore, you make a Teva Meitav. Says Gemara, but Chalecha de Les Lachin Madei is that really true? When there's no one else that's getting the benefit with you, Leimav Barach Hatev Meitav, we don't make a Teva Meitav. But the Tanya in the Brayse Amalei, they tell a person, Yol the Ishtei Zacher, your wife gave birth to a boy. Aimer he says, and this actually is Allah, you're supposed to make a Barach Hatev Meitav. Hashem is good and He does good, but you're the only one. You're the only father. There's no two fathers. Says Gemara, no Hasan Nami. There are also other preach, other people are getting that 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 good besura. They get Ishtei Badei. His wife also appreciates it. The Nichla Bezach, she also wants a boy. So if you make a Teva Meitav, because it's not only you, it's your wife that's also getting that, that gift. Yeah, the wife also. So the Gemara says, Tashma, the Gemara says, let's bring a ride from a different bride. So the bride says, Mace other if his father passed away, for who Yarsha and he inherits his father. And this is actually interesting halacha. If a person's father passed away, there's two brachas that a person's supposed to make in certain situations. But I mean, first he says, as we know the halacha is bark dynamics, a person has to make the bracha. Hashem is gebench, that he's the true judge. Even though it's bad, we make a bracha. Well, I'm at the end, after that, he says the following bracha, which is a real bracha, you make a bracha teva metiv. That God is good and he does good because of the, the news that you inherited, that you got inheritance from your father. So when they tell the person, your father passed away, so he inherits him, so he left property to him, so he'll make a dynamis, but he makes a type of mative. So you see that even though he's the only one getting the benefit, he makes a type of mative. So going to the Nami, there it's also talking about the He has brothers that are also getting the inheritance. So therefore, since it's other people enjoying it, you make a type of mative. So the Gemara says one more riot. Touch my the braisa. The halacha is shinu yain. Someone's in the middle of drinking wine in a meal. And then they bring him other wine that's better than the first one. <coughs> so the halacha is in a tzach You don't have to make a new bar prayer often. The bracha that you made goes on the other wine too. But let's say shinu makam. Let's say you changed your place. You left from here. You went to a different room, a different house. And they brought you wine. Then actually, and this is the halacha. Tzach you would have to make a bracha because of shinu makam. The original bracha doesn't go on there. Now, if I'm Rabbi Yisab, Rabbi Rabbi Yechon, and he says, and this is where the question's from, Afa Pishamu, even though they said, Shina Yain ain't a Tzarek Levarach, if you change the wine, you don't have to make a new bracha by Priyag Gafen. Avol Aymer, what you do have to say, is Baruch HaTayv HaMeitim. You make the bracha, this is actually a Halach Lamaisa, God is good and He does good because since you had one type of wine, then you had another type of wine. So then you make a new bracha. Now, Tzarek has a whole discussion that's regarding what the Allah is, that he says, first of all, this whole halacha of a type of is only when you have a change of wine. It's not when you have better bread or bread of meat. It's only wine because wine has two benefits. It's said, as we had in the previous stuff, it's seishit. And it's some samech, it makes the person happy. That's when you make a type of Now the Rashbam says, it's, as Rashi sounds like, it's only if the second wine is better. Then you make a type of But if it's the same, then not. Rabbeinu Tam says, no, as long as it didn't get worse. Now, in practice... It's very, very difficult to have this halacha of a type of meitav. There's many, many conditions and stipulations in the... You, there is such halacha. There are people that do it. But it has to be many cheshvayinahs. You go through the halacha of you'll see it's not simple at all. But one thing is the Gemara S. You see a make a type of meitav, even though you're just drinking yourself. I, I thought a type of meitav was only someone else having the benefit with you. So the Gemara, no, Hassan and there also, the halacha is being said. The Ike b'nei chabur, which actually is one of the conditions. If there's other people drinking with him, there's about day drinking with him, then the Allah is going to be that you'll make a teva meitiv, and therefore it's not a contradiction. Yes, a teva meitiv is only when other people have benefit with you, and a shechiyanu is when you're having the benefit by yourself. But again, in halacha lamaisa, one has to have many different conditions to make the bracha teva meitiv when they bring him new wine in a meal. Some ideas we spoke about today's da'af, brachas not natas. We continue with halacha the Mishnah of brachas haraya and of shmiya. We spoke about the brachas of shakaychik grasim when God's strength and his might fills up the world. It's like, wow, it makes a big splash. One of them was well, Allah's voice, which the Gemara explained is an earthquake. We had five different interpretations. Where does an earthquake come from? Either God, so to speak, cries two tears into the Yama Gadol, and that quakes the earth, or he claps his hands and is like, oh, oh, what's going to be? And that makes uh, the, the quaking of the earth. Or he sighs, a, oh, like it makes that uh, ver- reverberations. Or he's bite brick, he kicks the sky. Or it's when he's pushing his feet beneath his his chair, his keys are covered, and his footstool is the earth, and therefore that makes the quake, again, these all have metaphysical interpretations, it's not the simple understanding, but that's, that's the symbolism of, of what an earthquake is. We said on Ru'amim, on thunder, you make a shekech egvas me'ala'ilam, now the purpose of thunder is to straighten out the crookedness in the person's heart, where, where does the thunder come from? Either it's when the clouds collide, or when clouds are pouring water one to the other, or it's when the lightning hits the cloud, which the Gemara says that's the more logical interpretation, because the way it usually works is this lightning, clouds rumbling, boom, thunder. Therefore, it sounds like that it was the lightning that hit the cloud that makes it. Or it's the wind that blows on the hollow clouds when you have these musical instruments. It's the wind instruments that when it goes on the surface and by like the keg, it makes the sounds. That's the sound of the thunder. 
We said on the Ruches, what type of wind specifically, Zaf, a whirlwind. The Gemara also had different qualifications. It doesn't happen at night time. It doesn't go for two hours. That's when you make a bracha, shakrech, of malayim. We said also by bracha, by lightning. Now, we pointed out, although the Mishnah says you make a krech, of malayim, the meaning is to make oizam as on the lightning. And the Gemara qualified what type of lightnings and different things are harsh. And the reason why we said is, if you see it, you should beseech mercy, which we said regarding those clouds in the morning, it depends. If they're thin clouds, then it's insignificant. If they're thick clouds, that means it's going to be a gazunta rain. And therefore, don't even go out if you're going to try to sell grain. We said if you see a rainbow, in the clouds, first of all, it's machlekes. Do you fall on your face because it's like seeing the appearance of God, which on some level that's really what a rainbow is. Is white God is the white light, and the rainbow is all the spectrum of that, and like you're seeing his all that color coming out. But we the the, the, the halacha said we don't fall on our face, and but the bracha is, and this is a, a real bracha you make when you see a rainbow. You're not supposed to point out to people the rainbow because it's a simikol, but you make the bracha zechar bris that God remembers the covenant, He's been never bris, He's trustworthy in this covenant, become a mori, and He fulfills His word, which is that He's not going to bring the marble when He's angry, so to speak. He brings the rainbow as a sign that He's not going to bring the marble. We said in the Mishnah when you make oisimai sabrishes by mountains and seas and and and, and, and hills, etc. We had a question. Why here are these things Isamai The previous category of all these things are also my Why are you only making Kaychigurasam? You should make Isamai So one and answer Abai says, you're right, Karchvatani. Both apply to both. These are more Kaychai, these are more Maisa. But really, you could say either Brach on either one. Or Rabbi says, no, you're right. There, both brachas apply. But we said here, my and there, Kaych Resmalaylam, because here, this category of mountains, you only apply Ice my not Kaych Resmalaylam. A mountain doesn't move from its location, it's just where it is. And that's why we said, my is here, and Kaych Resmalaylam over there. But my is if you make a bracha on the clear blue sky after the Korban, on the one hand, it's exactly as God created. On the other hand, the other Mandama says, no, there's blackness to the sky, because like, like the earth is covered in sackcloth from the Korban Beis Amikdash. She spoke about what's called Chama this the, the sun, when it starts its cycle, when it was in the creation of the Bria of the Oilam, what we know as Brech HaZachama, when we make the Bracha on the sun. It's every 28 years, exactly the moment when the luminaries were, were put up. Now, the Brysis says the same thing applies to the moon, the five primary planets, and when the Mazalas are exactly as they were made, but we don't, that's not our minute because we don't know exactly what that is. It's more difficult to ascertain. We spoke about the weekly zodiac cycle, which was very important to get to the halacha, which is the seven, seven, this, the seven uh, elements that we speak about in that of, um, of, the, of the five planets and of the, and of the, uh, the two other, the sun and the moon. And we spoke about the, the, the small and the large cycles of the four tkufas of the year, which is this four tkufas a year. It's, there's 91, hour, the one, one, nine, one, 91 hours and seven and a half, 91 days and seven and a half hours from one tkufa to the next. There's four in the year. And if you do a whole year four times, you're going to get the exact hour. If you do that four year cycle seven times, which is four times seven is 28, you'll get not only the same hour, you'll get exactly the same day. That's exactly 6 p.m., the beginning of Wednesday. That's when you get to Shabsai, which is Saturn, which is that mazel that's starting Wednesday night. That's what the Gemara means when it says in the Bryce that every 28 years. We spoke about in the Mishnah, the Yam HaGadol, if you see the Great Sea, you make every Leprakim, which the Gemara says that's every 30 days, which Tyson already explained that's really all these brachas are every 30 days. Uh, you can make Oisimai Sabratius on rivers and seas only if it was unchanged by people. If it was changed, you can't say it's the way God created the world because it was changed. We also spoke about in the Mishnah on rain, you make a Teva Metiv. So the Gemara says, wait a second, but don't we say a different Nusach on rain? So the Gemara had two answers. Either when there's a lot of rain, then you make a Teva Metiv. When there's a little rain, then you say the Maidim, and also part of the Nusach of Nishmas. Or it's talking about both the time when there's a lot of rain. But if you have land and it's a partnership, then you can make a type of mate because you're getting benefit and other people are getting the benefit with you just like when you have a baby boy or if you have a shared inheritance or you have a new bottle of wine with friends where you're having a benefit with others, you make a type of mate. And so when do you say maidim is you have no field at all. And when do you say shechino is when you have no partner. And let's say you only heard about it, that's the same thing as basur's type. Then you make a type of mate. Thank you to any time for hosting us.